Look very closely. Can you see him? And now, it's a little toad. In this video I will be talking a bit about what other animals are living in this aquarium and also a bit about how the tadpoles turned into young toads. The first thing I thought I'd show you was the insane plant growth. It's really impressive. Some of these plants have easily grown five times their original size. The LED floodlight has probably helped a bunch with this. I think it actually looks even nicer than before. Here's a fun little creature, Dugesia lugubris. It's a flatworm, similar to the planaria you might have seen in some of my ecospheres with a very dark brown or sometimes even black color. I think it's one of the prettiest flatworms there is. Freshwater flatworms I should add because there are some seriously amazing looking terrestrial and marine flatworms. Anyway, we're getting off track here. One of my favorite things of Dugesia lugubris is its Dutch name, Lugubre Glijer, which translates to lurid glider. Funny, I'm not sure if it has a common English name, I couldn't find it. I also like how they aren't afraid of bumping into two aquatic isopods doing sexy time. Overall, it's just a really flat worm. So have you figured out what this next bit is about yet? Well, it's quite interesting and also very hard to film. But this little aquarium has an active springtail colony. They are really fun to watch walking around on top of the water surface and jumping really high. It's quite surreal to see these little critters just walking on the water, standing even. These aren't the only animals that do this. Pond skaters or water sliders come to mind. But when looking at those, you can actually see the water tension they are floating on. Of course, springtails make use of this same surface tension, but they are so small, you can't actually see it. Which makes it extra funny to watch. I also want to share this cool picture with you. These are pond skaters of an unknown species eating a honeybee. Cool! There are almost 10,000 described species of springtails and many more undescribed species. Looking at its features, it's a very small globular springtail with a light color, not shiny, with no hairs or interesting color patterns and assuming it's one of the more common species, my educated guess would be that these are Smintherides aquaticus. Here's a fun clip that I honestly should have started recording earlier, but I was too amazed. Anyway, I'll tell you what you are seeing here. There's quite a few Chironomidae or Mitch larvae in this aquarium. This particular larva kept bumping into this young toad. I can't possibly imagine that the little larva actually did this on purpose, but it happened like five times in a row. And even when the toad swam away quite far, the larva found its way back to the poor amphibian. This time it finally missed, but not by much. Here we have the two breeding isopods we saw earlier. I hear you thinking, wow, are they still going at it? Well, dear viewers, they can actually remain in this position for up to three whole days. Woo! There's actually quite a lot of aquatic isopods in this aquarium. Most are stowaways from the sticks, bark and plants. This little fella right here is the smallest bebe isopod I've ever seen. I can only distinguish about three and a half pairs of legs. Adults have seven pairs of legs. Here is a bad scale comparison with my finger. When aquatic isopods first hatch from their eggs, they are carried around in their mother's brood pouch for protection. So this one must have just gotten out of there. Do you remember the phantom midge larvae from last episode? 
Well, there's still a few of them in this aquarium, but most of them have actually turned into these. Phantom midge pupae. They look really interesting. Phantom midge larvae are actually hunters. They mostly feed on small crustaceans like Daphnia and Cyclops. The pupae don't do much, on the outside at least. They just float in the water column, hoping to not get eaten. I don't know the exact numbers, but I can imagine only a very small percentage of eggs make it to adult animals. On the inside, it's a completely different story of course. The pupa is slowly metamorphosizing into an adult animal. Adults rarely eat. Their main goal is reproducing. They don't live for very long as adults. This little guy right here is another insect larva, but from a completely different animal. This is the larva of an aquatic beetle. It's quite small, so I would assume it's the larva of a smaller aquatic beetle, though I'm not sure what exact species it could be. This is an aquatic beetle, though I don't believe it's the same species as the larva you saw earlier. It looks like this insect is a Noterus clavicornis. This species can be found in Europe, northern Africa and the top half of Asia, but it does not have a common English name. Normally I would translate the Dutch name into English for you guys, but I don't really know how to translate it this time. In Dutch we call this animal Haagse hopjeskever. Kever means beetle. That part is easy. Haagse hopjes are a Dutch candy, which tastes of caramel and coffee. If you take a look at the back of Noterus clavicornis, you can see why they are named after Haagse hopjes. The larvae of this species never have to swim up to the water surface to breathe, because they can bury themselves between the roots of aquatic plants. With the back of their body, they poke a hole in the stem of a plant. That way they can extract oxygen from the plant. Very cool. Can you see all the isopods, larvae and other animals walking on the bark underwater? This animal appeared after about a week in the aquarium. This is a salamander larva. The reason I only saw it now is because of the way salamanders lay eggs. Frogs and toads lay a whole bunch of eggs together in the water. Salamanders do it a bit differently. A female water salamander only lays one egg at a time. They lay this egg on a leaf of a plant and then fold the leaf around it. So this little one here must have come into the aquarium as an egg wrapped inside a leaf on one of the plants. Wanna see me do a magic trick? There were also a couple of really large back swimmers in the aquarium, but they were quite hard to capture on camera unfortunately. So let's move on to the toads. Here you can see a toad tadpole with four legs. These two, like most of them, still only have their back legs. Some of them are starting to develop front legs. This particular one is far ahead of everyone else in its development. It has four legs. It's starting to get the body shape of a toad and it's quickly losing its tail. Here's one with four legs but a complete tail. At this point they are all still living entirely underwater. That quickly changed though, and some of the toads were starting to climb out of the water and on land. The other ones weren't fully developed yet. These are common toads, buffo buffo. More and more of them started to climb out of the water as they developed into their final form. 
It was truly a joy to look at them. They didn't mind sitting on my finger at all. This way you really get a sense of how small they really are. This is the toad that was the fastest to develop. So it's been out of the water for the most time. You can see he's starting to get nice and fat, like a proper toad. Because I found these toads so much fun to look at, I filmed a lot of cool footage to share with you guys. A little too much for this already long video. So what I think I'm going to do is just pick some highlights to put in this video and then I'll also make an unlisted video with a nice tune that shows more footage. For those of you who would be interested in that. Anyway, here you can catch a little glimpse of one of the back swimmers. Very little. It looks like something really pissed it off. He doesn't look too happy. Maybe it was this springtail jumping in front of him. Here we have a really rare view of the ventral side of this buffo buffo. This is what buffo buffo belly looks like. It's about time we bring these little guys back home. Here are some of them in a bucket ready for transport to the pond they came from. So here we are back at the same pond with some very interesting wildlife. Goodbye. Hopefully they'll have little tadpoles of their own in two or three years. I would like to thank Empress McKee, Mark Dillard, Zachary Hoofsmit, Philip Covello and Rikke Kuipers, as well as the 83 other patrons for their generous support. It's much appreciated. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.